If you're frustrated with what's happening with the federal government right now, chances are pretty good that you are frustrated because the federal government is operating outside of its constitutional jurisdiction. A lot of people are asking the question, well, what can we do about it? We keep trying to have uh, elections and, and we're electing new people and it seems like we get the same result over and over again, both on the Democrat and Republican side. Well, Mike Ferris, the founder of Convention of States and Mark Meckler are joining me on the show today. And they're going to bring to you all of the reasons why it is so important for you to get involved in the fight to limit the jurisdiction, to limit the scope of the power of the federal government. That can happen through Convention of States. Stick around, you guys. This is going to be a great conversation. All right, well, here we are at the floor of the National Religious Broadcasters Association, and I'm pleased to have Mark Meckler and my friend Mike Ferris joining me to talk about Convention of States. Hey, guys, thanks for stopping by. Great to be with you. Yeah, it's exciting. It is exciting. All right, I want to jump right into this because, as you know, we've talked about this on my podcast before. A lot of people still confused and wondering what the heck is Convention of States, particularly if they live in my neck of the woods in Washington state. So what is Convention of States and why should it matter to the American people? In the last week of the Constitutional Convention in 1787, um, George Mason stood up on the floor and said, look, at someday the federal government's going to abuse its authority. And when that happens, we need to have a way for the states to be able to stop it by amending the Constitution to take away whatever power they're abusing. And, and so he proposed the language of Article 5 that gives the abilities to, for states to unilaterally amend the Constitution if they walk, work cooperatively together. And so 34 states, two-thirds, have to call a convention for a particular topic. And then whatever comes out of the convention by a simple majority vote of states goes to the state legislatures, and 38 states have to agree to it. So Mark and I are working on a project that seeks to amend the Constitution in three areas. Fiscal restraints on the federal government, term limits on federal officials, including Congress, but not limited to Congress. Dr. Fauci could be term limited. Hello. And, Hello yeah. and, and, and the third is the general reduction of power and authority of the federal government. And so anything that reduces federal power can be talked about at the convention. Nineteen states have uh, adopted our resolution. Kansas is a little bit... Need 38? A, need 34, 34 to start. 34. Yeah, so we're we're about 14 needing to go because Kansas will get sorted out and we'll be at 20. So it, so in layman's terms, if you're on a train and you got a runaway train, which we do, the federal government's a runaway train right now, this is an emergency break, correct? Exactly. And it's, it's the way, you know, the... The Constitution was not written by, by saints for saints. It was written by sinners for sinners. They said, we don't want the same group of sinners deciding how much power they have. So there's really only two choices. Congress can decide how much power the federal government should have, or the state legislatures can decide. You give me that choice, I'm going to pick, I, the state legislatures aren't perfect, but give me that group of sinners over yeah. the group of federal sinners. Who can do less time. damage. Right. I mean, honestly, you give it to the federal government, now you got the whole country instead of a state who can actually uh, amend it. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add to the why, and the reason why is because the federal government's out of control. Yeah. Every single person who listens to you knows the federal government's out of control. And then what they get told year after year is, you know what, if we just elect better people, it's all going to work out. And my answer to people who say that is like, how's that working for you? Because right. I'm 61 <laughs> in my lifetime, it hasn't gotten better. Yeah. And even under the best of presidents, even under Ronald Reagan, under Donald Trump, the federal government grows. Every administration since Washington has grown the federal government with the exception of Coolidge. And it's not going to stop doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. We know that's the definition of insanity. So we have to do something different. And what the framers told us is we're going to give you, the state legislatures, you, the people acting through the state legislatures, the power to stop a runaway federal government. We have to do that right now. So I've got kind of a tricky question, I guess, at least it was for me. You guys know that I ran for Congress in Washington State, came pretty darn close to winning the primary there. And I heard in the Republican Party from my betters, you know, over and over and over again, don't bring up convention of states. It's a divisive topic. It's never going to happen. Uh, and there are a lot of people who just go, shoot, you know, we're doing this thing and it's never going to work. But it sounds to me, and I, I tried to make this case, although not as effectively as the two of you out on the campaign trail, this is actually working. I mean, you guys are a whole lot more ahead of where uh, the naysayers thought you would be. 
But what do you say to people who say, hey, this is divisive in American politics today. It just further serves to divide the Republican Party. The Republican Party is not the point of the exercise. Freedom is the point of the exercise. Limited federal government is one of the points of the exercise because limited federal government is an attribute that leads toward freedom. Yep. And so uh, if you want to have runaway debt, I mean, when we started this project 10 years ago, the federal deficit was, in round numbers, $16 trillion on the recognized side. There's another part. We'll just talk about the recognized debt. Effectively, it's doubled in 10 years. So if we wait another 10 years, do we really want to ha- see the national debt be at $64 trillion? Because that's where we're headed. Yep. And, and so it may be even go faster than that. We may reach that in five or seven years. We can stop all of that, not a little bit. We can stop it with this instrument. It's the only thing that works. So we like to say it's the solution that's as big as the problem because there's no other thing that comes close to, to the power of the federal government being curtailed in their abuse of power. You know, who decides what the rules are? Do we want the states to decide what the rules are for the federal government? You know, I, I don't trust the states deciding state power. Right. You know, I want to. I want to control. But when I, I want the states controlling federal power. Yep. And and that check and balance is so essential. And when people say it's divisive. Look, I'm going to be blunt because time is short, and I don't yep. mean in our interview. I mean for the I, country. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so, look, if if you're afraid of this, the only reason people are really opposed to it is they say, oh, there's going to be a runaway convention. Right. And we can go through all the reasons why that's not true, but I'm going to be much more blunt than that. With because, And part of it is, I've been doing this 10 years, and I'm frustrated, to be honest with you, with conservatives, quote unquote, I feel your quotes. frustration there, my friend. Okay, so they say <laughs> it's going to be a runaway convention. Well... God bless you for standing with George Soros, Hillary Clinton, Planned Parenthood, La Raza, MoveOn.org, every single leftist group in America. You're repeating their talking points. You're repeating their talking points. You are now either a, a willing dupe or just completely ignorant, but you are absolutely serving the radical left in America. All of them are aligned against Convention of States. Uh, Senator Russ Feingold, former senator from Wisconsin, a full-blown socialist, just wrote a full book attacking Convention of States. So if you're saying those things, well, then you're with Soros and Feingold and Hillary spoke out against it. Howard Dean spoke out against it. Welcome to Planned Parenthood, you who are very pro-life, right? You say you're pro-life, but you're standing with Planned Parenthood against Convention of States. I can tell you for me, never in my life, Heidi, never have I looked in the mirror and thought, hmm, why am I standing with Soros and Hillary Clinton and Planned Parenthood? And if I did, I'd think, well, I must be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, uh, I'm curious to know. So you said, how many, how many states again do you have? 19, actually 20 if you count Kansas. All right. So what are the ones, what are the states that are at the jumping off place right now? You think, hey, we're really close in this state, really close in that state. Tell us a little bit about some of the victories that you guys are seeing. Because I frankly think that uh, listeners need to hear, hey, this can actually happen. And if it can happen in X state, it could happen in Washington state. Well, some of the states that we've been working on this year, and the one that's the closest right now is North Carolina. We've passed the North Carolina House. We're expecting a vote in the next couple of weeks in the North Carolina Senate. And it looks positive. It's not a guarantee, but it looks good. Um, And by the way, the only chance of us being stopped are by conservatives, right? The ones yeah. who are standing with George Soros. Yeah. Yeah. And and so um, Iowa, we uh, worked real hard in Iowa. We came short. We passed in committee in both houses, but we didn't have uh, enough gazinkum to get completely over the line. So it's it's sitting there waiting for the next year. So We're you'll go, go back. back again. We're going to go back again. And in in our committee victories re- remain intact. We're at the same stage because it's a two-year cycle the way Iowa politics works. So those are uh, Wyoming and Montana are states that we should be passed in. South Dakota is a state that we should be passed in. And it's just the influence of what I call basically Christian nihilists. Uh, They hate everything. And they don't want to do anything. They want to tear down everything. And that's not what God would have us to do. And that's not what the Constitution is about. We need to be building freedom you know, and using checks and balances uh, to limit the power of the federal government is the most positive yep. thing we can do. At the same time, it's also the most restrictive thing they can do. So if you're, if you're into restrictive, we'll just teach them it's, it's restrictive. Come on, help us. You know, <laughs> restrict the power of the federal government. Yeah, you know, yeah. Restrict your, the growing debt. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious to know, you know, for, for listeners who are, you know, one of the things I love about the audience for the Heidi St. John podcast is that they are very, very proactive. In fact, I just had 
Patty Garibay on here last week. She's the founder of American Heritage Girls. She said she'd rather come on this show than on Fox News because she gets a better result because the people that listen to this show want to be engaged. So if somebody is listening to this and they want to be engaged in Convention of States, what do they do? Yeah, they go to conventionofstates.com. First thing, sign the petition. Let your legislators know that you're in support of Convention of States. And by the way, that matters even in the 19 states where we've passed because we're constantly having to re-educate legislators. Uh, number two, click on the Take Action tab. This is the main one for your listeners right. because that's how you get involved. There's so many volunteer positions in Convention of States, everything from something that might take you an hour a week to something that might take you 20 hours a week or 40 hours a week. We literally in the country now have over 10,000 people that volunteer between 10 and 40 plus hours a week. We wow. call them volunteer employees. It's yeah, an yeah. That's the workforce. And it's important that people understand it's more than the convention. Our folks are involved in the pro-life movement. I mean, what I want to bring up right now, you probably know about it really well, there is a major pro-life fight going on in Ohio right yes. now. Ohio is ground zero, and they're going to shove abortion down Ohioans' throats. Yeah. They're going to remove parental choice. So our folks are involved in that fight in Ohio. They're involved in gun rights fights. They're involved in election integrity fights. So if you click on that Take Action tab and say you want to volunteer, somebody will contact you. We're a very high-touch organization. It's not just put you on a list. That's how people can really get engaged in the fight to save the country. I think it's important also because we got in this mess because of inaction. Mike, one of the things that you told me at the beginning of my run for Congress, when I had this you know, giant hill in front of me to climb, having never run for office before in my life, was that the surest way to lose a fight was just not to show up to fight in the first place. And that's kind of where we are right now. What is the benefit of just ordinary citizens like Heidi St. John getting off the bench and onto the battlefield? You are teaching people that their participation matters because politics always is the victory of those who participate. Yes. And so uh, if, we, if we work, you know, um, so, you know, maybe we don't pass this bill, but we're going to pass the next one and you get experienced. Um, and so, um, and it, sometimes it takes a long time. A lot of us worked on reversing Roe versus Wade for a long time. I happen to be involved in the final step that pushed it over the line with the Alliance Defending Freedom. So amazing. Um, but, but, you know, we kept after it, we kept after it, we kept after it, and we, we don't give up. And so the Convention of States is one of those big projects, like reversing Roe versus Wade. Uh, in terms of scale, I mean, in terms of moral importance, there's nothing more important than, than getting rid of abortion. Yeah. But in terms of scale, the Convention of States is bigger. Because it is a, a, a wholesale reduction of federal power that affects all those issues. Um, I mean, if we were uh, successful, we could cut off the ability of the federal government to fund abortion or anything like it. Yep. Because it's a restriction on power that would be in the Constitution. Uh, and so we, um, we have an enormous opportunity here. And we, we just need people to get involved. That's all it is. Yeah, and you know, and for, for one second, because he, he won't do it for himself... I just want to tout Mike's accomplishments, right? Because you said some of your listeners are like, well, this is never going to happen, right? So first thing Mike does in his career and in his now, what I would say, I put him up with the founders and the framers. I do too. Right? So Mike goes out and homeschooling is illegal in the United States of America for the most part. And he says, well, that's unjust. The parents have an absolute right to educate their own kids. And he ultimately makes it legal in all 50 states. He and a lot of other people, but Mike leading the way, yep. uh, Homeschool Legal Defense Association. So people said that's impossible. Mm -hmm. And so Mike just went out and did it. And then Mike finishes off, or mostly finishes off doing that. And it's like, well, what do we do with our kids now that need a place to go to college where they're not gonna get ruined everything we taught them? Oh, found a college, right? Uh, you can't just found a college. Well, Mike did that. And yep. it's a highly successful, one of the best Patrick schools. Patrick Henry. Yeah, Patrick Henry College, one of the best schools in the country teaching foundational principles to young adults. And so then when Mike came to me and said, look, we need to fix the country and here's something we can do. And I asked, well, has that, that ever been done before? No. And so most people would come to me and say that. I'd be like, yeah, well, then maybe that's not such a good idea. <laughs> right? But when you look at Mike's past, you're like, okay, well, this guy does impossible things. Yeah. We throw Roe versus Wade in there. and they were, yeah. I never thought that would be overturned in my, in my lifetime. lifetime. I never thought right? I'd see it. Yeah. So here's a guy that has done impossible things multiple times. He painted a vision for me. Look, we can do this. We can take control of the federal government and shove it back in the constitutional box. So I'm buying what he's selling because he has a track record showing that he can do it. Yeah. And it's so important. I mean, obviously, you know, Mike and I have talked about this a lot. The, the freedom that we have uh, isn't free and it's constantly under threat in this country. Cast a vision right now for the people who are like, all right, you guys, 
I'm, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm interested in convention estates. What happens when that passes? What happens when you reach the threshold and all of a sudden, bam, you got a convention, then what? Well, the convention is going to be the greatest civics lesson in the history of our country. It'll be televised gavel to gavel. People will be watching. The thing that I remember is people, many people remember the Oliver North hearings. Yes. Until uh, the hearings, they got all filtered by the media. And they were un- undecided. Then they had eight hours of straight all un- un- unfiltered. And people loved Oliver North. Yeah. And, and the Congress's attitude toward him changed overnight because they were getting... Because the people were watching. That's right. right. The people yeah. were watching. And yeah. so America's going to be watching. And they're going to hear debates about, well, wh- what can we do about the federal government's debt? What can we do about all this irresponsible uh, spending? What can we do about the fact that 195 out of 200 treaties aren't sent to the Senate for ratification? Like the WHO treaty, they're going to try to shove down our throats through a presidential signature rather than a Senate ratification. You start hearing these things and you realize we can do something about it. It's going to be the greatest civics lesson in conservative philosophy about government that's ever been done. And the country is going to move. And I think, you know, if you take the polling today about what's popular with people, yeah, we, you know, it's not going to be as good as when they've watched this massive civics lesson for a long time. Yeah, and the fundamental discussion is going to be about who decides. I mean, this is a really important thing people need to understand. This is not a policy debate. It's literally, we're not. It's ta- about who gets to make the decision. That's it, which is yeah. the most important decision we can make as citizens. DC hates this, by the way. They don't want this debate. The mm-hmm. debate they want is should we spend X trillion or Y trillion? Right. right? And so that's right. all on their ground, their premise. Our premise is you shouldn't be making the decisions. The people in the state should be making the decisions. So what an incredible debate to have nationally about what is the proper role of the federal government vis-a-vis it's the It's about people jurisdiction. The That's it. It's about jurisdiction. And I, I watch, I believe, and Mike, again, ahead of his time on this one with parentalrights.org and people, you know, he's been talking about the fight for parental rights for a long time. In Washington state recently, that took front and center as Jay Inslee signed one of the worst 5599 into law which basically uh, gives the state the right to remove a child because he disagrees with his parents over gender. So we're t- and again, you get back to who decides. In Washington state, Washington state has said, well, the state decides, your nine-year-old child decides. This is a question of jurisdiction. Right. And Convention of States has it nailed down and people need to get involved. And I love what you guys are doing because you're giving the average citizen who doesn't have you know three degrees and they're not, they're not an attorney, but they go, hey, this is actually something that I can do, right? This is something that everyday, ordinary citizens can get involved in right now. Indeed, and and I believe that uh, it's more attainable in more states than people think. Uh, and, you can know, we do it in Washington State? I do. I think so. You do? Yeah. Really? I think so. Okay, I'm going um, to help you. I mean, I, of course, I lived 30 <laughs> years there, so I'm not a stranger to you this. You have thing. an affinity for yeah, my home state. I, well, yeah. I mean, I grew up there. Graduated yeah. from high school. Yeah. Got, uh, you know, I, it's where I was first married. Mark, did uh, you know he school. came back to Washington State to help me recently with a fundraiser? I and I think yeah. I heard him say, this makes me homesick. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's yeah. one of the most beautiful places yeah. in the country, all across the state. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Seattle... Right. Really, it'd be, it, you know, it's, and you know, it was just six years ago that the Republicans controlled the Senate in Washington right. State, and so we we need to basically get every place other than Seattle to gang up against Seattle. Yeah, that's what it, that's what it'll take in Washington State. Yeah, but I think it's doable. It's going to be one of the hardest states. Yep. But I think it's I think I it's like doable. a good fight. Yeah. You like a good fight. I do. I love Let's a good go. fight. Let's go. Let's go. Mark Meckler, Mike Ferris, thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolute honor to have you both here, and let's do it again soon. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed that. Go to conventionofstates.org, and you can find out how you can get involved in the fight to limit the power of the federal government right from your home. I hope you guys were inspired by Mark and Mike, and especially by Mike Ferris, who's been on the front lines of the fight for freedom in education all around the country. He was at the forefront of the fight to uh, limit the power of the federal government with regard to Roe v. Wade. You guys all know now that Roe v. Wade has been overturned by the Supreme Court and kicked it back to the states because it always was a state's rights issue with a Fifth Amendment issue. And you can get involved. You have been given power by your Constitution to get involved and make a difference. So head on over to Convention of States. And you guys, we can make a difference together. Thanks for listening. I'll see you right back here again tomorrow at the intersection of faith and